Hey guys, this is uh, Leo from the BGD Team Pilot. Today I'm gonna talk to you about uh, my experience with the Cure 2. So, as a little bit of a recap on me, I've been flying maybe before that to around 400 hours with the Punk and then the Riot. So we can say it's kind of uh, an upgrade for me to go from a B-Class to a C-Class glider. So the Q2, it has 74 cells and 6.4 aspect ratio. It has long rods in the center and so it is designed for maximum efficiency in flight. And we have to say it is not especially light and nor compact. But eh, it's okay and it's made to perform. The inflation is actually quite good for this class of wing I feel like you can really pull it up take it down and you know you can make it hang there and pull it back up it's really nice it really works nicely and on the other hand it's quite uh, yaw sensitive but I guess it's a bit normal for a 6.4 aspect ratio glider uh, but even if it collapses a little bit it still stays in the air because it has really this ability to, to stay there and then you can pull it up and it doesn't research too far uh, really not much I think for a sea glider but we'll come back to that because one of the characteristics of the Q2 is that it is very pitch stable I am flying the S size Q2 uh, so 65 to 85 my all up weight is about 76 to 78 kilos so kind of a little over mid range I was afraid that maybe I was going to be too light on it, but actually I feel like the structure is so rigid that it doesn't really mind being in the middle at all. It feels really nice and solid and tense over the head. And I was thinking maybe about uh, taking a few extra kilos of ballast to fly it better in strong conditions, but maybe it's not even needed. So that's a really good point because uh, it's always a pain in the ass to carry a lot of ballast. So what I'm gonna say here is mostly concerning the S size, but it kind of it's probably gonna be the same for all the sizes, kind of same characteristics. Concerning takeoff, uh, I feel like the Cure 2 is not especially difficult. Like for a forward launch, if you put your wing correctly on the ground, it inflates regularly and without any hang back, and then it positions itself over your head and you just it takes you in the air like any other glider, so no problem here. The first time I got in the air with my Cure 2 compared to the Riot I had before, I noticed that I had quite a roll, quite some roll in my harness, and so I did want to close a bit uh, the chest strap to calm the roll. Uh, maybe it could be better to close the ABS system, but actually I don't have these settings on my GTO Lite first generation, so I might actually want... Uh, I'm now buying the version 2 which has the ABS setting and we'll see if it helps there. But once the chest strap is closed, it is uh, not a problem anymore, the roll. One of the first thing which strikes you in the air is how rigid kind of the wing is like it doesn't flutter it doesn't it really moves a bit like a, a block and it doesn't deform too much and it cuts through the air and there is very little uh, pitch it really stays there it enters the thermal while staying there and it doesn't hang back it's uh, it doesn't shoot forward when you exit the thermal it's uh, it kind of makes it quite easy to deal with However, I don't. I think also because of all this rigidity and pitch stableness, uh, the feedback of the wing is very mellow. But it might also be due to my chest strap being a bit too narrow. And so I do feel you have to concentrate quite a bit to feel the information about the air mass. If you are a pilot who likes a lot of feedback from your wing, maybe the Q2 is not gonna deliver that much information as you would like. Uh, but if you like calm ride, however punchy the conditions are, the Q2 is gonna help you deliver this calm ride while giving you information if you stay concentrated. 
and allow you to fly for hours and hours without getting too tired. One of the reasons I like PGD gliders is uh, handling because a PGD glider always turns when you ask it to turn even if it's pitching backward you can always force it into the turn kind of. Uh, you can really like turn efficiently and if you really want to carve it you can pull more and it will go in. The Riot and the Punk had a very playful turn which dived quite a lot so you need to catch the outside quite a lot when you want it to turn sharply. It's quite kind of fun like make a jump, catch the outside and you could turn very narrow. On the Q2 they made the turn a bit more cross-country oriented meaning that it dives a little less but still it uh, retains this uh, sweetness of handling that is proper to BGD wings. In Terminals, the aspect ratio actually feels quite easy to manage compared to the Riot, uh, which has one point of less aspect ratio. For 6.4 aspect ratio gliders, the Q2 seems fairly easy to manage. It kind of takes care of itself in the Terminals and everything. You just need to sometimes catch a bit the outside, which is okay. However, I wouldn't say like it's really as easy as a B plus because when things might go wrong, then the precision of your inputs will need to be greater. You will have the yo to control that you don't really have on a lower aspect ratio glider, and uh, and the stall point is much closer if you. I have a flight incident for example. So yes, it seems easy and it kind of is easy but it's made for real C pilots. Pilots who have remastered the B class and who have a lot of experience already. Because of the Q2 being an ENC pitch table glider, I kind of feel like you shouldn't really you should let it fly. It should it will manage itself very well and it should only uh, put short inputs, short and deep inputs in the brake uh, to maybe prevent any coming collapse or slight surge. Uh, you shouldn't be always on the brake and being like that, it's not gonna be very good and you're probably gonna have a, a lot of, of fuel which might give you a bit of collapses like it happened on this video here. The brake travel is medium I would say, it's, it's shorter than on the B+, which is probably it's normal for this aspect ratio. Uh, you can, but it's kind of progressive in the field, so you can feel when you are getting close to too deep in the brake, but you don't need to go really deep in the brake to have a good maneuverability. It's a probably more a glider that you fly around hands up all the time, as much as possible. And you let it go, you let it fly, you let it carve through the air. Concerning performance, I didn't make any com direct comparison with any other glider, but from the habit I have from flying with the with B plus gliders, I can really say that there is a real step up there, and that it glides better, it go through the air mass better, so you can go along the ridge much faster without getting bumped on the thermals all the time. Now, let's speak about the sweet stuff, the speed. The speed on the Q2 is something really incredible. I feel it like the, you gain speed like twice as much as on the, on the Riot. It's crazy. Like you push the first bar and you're already like 8, plus 8, maybe 10 kilometers over your trim speed. It's really, really crazy. Second speed is like uh, really fast and top speed just blowing your mind away. You have these uh, C handles which connect uh, with a uh, connect to the, to the B riser which helps you control the pitch uh, but it's actually quite again so pitch stable you don't really need so much control but if you have a dive you can just grab it with the C and less of releasing your foot and keep on going and keep on gliding. Uh, on a good point for a C class glider the ears are really stable and usable. Uh, they tend to stick to stay there but if you wait they might slowly open up. It's also part of uh, the progressive stability. Progressive stability means that the center of the wing is really strong, very solid, and the tips are much more fragile. 
and my experience with the progressive stability, which I probably starting to have on the punk, is that it really helps you become a better pilot if you take the information as you should. Because some people might say, oh yes, it collapsed all the time from the tips. But actually, no, uh, what happens is every time you've got a, a tip which collapsed, that means you got something wrong. So, or maybe uh, your pilot inputs were not on point, or your position in the air mass was not, uh, at, was not good either, like maybe you went out of the thermal or something like that. Or maybe you are flying really crappy air, and if you are flying really crappy air and get tips collapse all the time, maybe maybe you'd better or change spot or, or go land. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather have a wing which talks to me and teach me how to properly pilot my wing uh, than a big block that doesn't give me any information and suddenly hugely collapse on me, which is what could have an, happen with a very strong glider with and without any progressive stability. I did not have many collapses on the Q2 because I I don't really like having collapses and I learned to control my pitch. But I did have this massive 70% asymmetric on my very first flight with it, which was actually very turbulent and I was kind of tired, so it was not very good for a first flight. <coughs> But anyway, as the reactions of the wing were really soft, because like you can see that it reopens by center, the counter tips collapse to prevent any turn, and then it opens slowly, and actually in this case it, it reopens when the wing is in front of me, so it doesn't, you know, bang open like that, which can re get really dangerous. And, uh, I got another maybe 30%, 40% asymmetric and it kind of stayed in and leave me a lot of time to just deal with it and I really think it's important on any glider that they collapse on bank open and because then they can dive really far and, uh, and that's when it gets, it gets dangerous in my opinion. Uh, on the landing, well, nothing to say except it glides and glides a bit more than what you are used to. You have a good uh, fair capacity if you like to have some uh, nice landing. I kind of enjoy myself doing this barefoot, uh, which uh, looks uh, really fun, but uh, uh, be careful not to, not, to, not to land in the ground. It could be painful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, this review. If you did, don't hesitate to put a thumbs up. And uh, you can also think about registering to my channel. See you there.